end as we began this week with a metaphor. In this case, the phoenix, that great bird of ancient Greek mythology, reborn and rising from its own ashes, a bright and colorful symbol of renewal. That's how the Nobel Prize winning writer Doris Lessing described the storyteller she believed is deep inside each one of us. It is the storyteller, the dream maker, the myth maker that is our phoenix, she said, that represents us at our best and at our most creative. Doris Lessing died last Sunday, age 94. There is no doubt fiction makes a better job of the truth, she wrote, and so she proved in her masterwork, The Golden Notebook, and the many other novels written throughout a literary career that spanned six decades. She was an iconoclast. She didn't suffer fools. She said what she meant and meant what she said with no holes barred and no subject off limits. I spoke with her 10 years ago as she described growing up in Africa and her one great love, the written word. You never stop writing? No, I'm, I'm compulsive. And I deeply think that it, it has to be something very neurotic. And I'm not joking, it has to be. Because if I finished a book, and this wonderful release, which I'm now feeling, it's off, it's in a parcel, it's gone to the publisher. Bliss and happiness. I don't have to do anything, nothing. I can just sit around. But suddenly it starts, you see. This terrible feeling as I'm just wasting my life. I'm useless, I'm no good. Now, it's a fact that if I spend a day busy as a little kitten rushing around, I do this, I do that, but I haven't written. So it's a wasted day and I'm no good. How do you account for that nonsense? Was there what we call an aha moment, a eureka moment, when you knew that you were going to spend your life writing, whether successfully or not? Was there such a moment? Well, I was writing all my childhood and I wrote two novels when I was 17, which were terrible and I'm glad I tore them up. So I wrote, I had to write. You know, the thing was, I had no education. You left school at age 14, 14 right? Yeah, and I wasn't trained for anything. What was there in a young girl, you know, 12, 13, 14, or 15, that said, I want to write? I was at that time being an, uh, what we now call an au pair. I was a nursemaid, and it was pretty boring. So I thought, well, let's try and write a novel. I wrote two. I went back to the farm and wrote two novels. In Africa? This in, was in Africa. But yeah. well, where did that idea come from? Had you read a lot? Had somebody... I had never you... stopped reading, you know. I read and read and read, and it was what saved me and educated me. So um, writing a novel seemed to be a way out. As you talk, I think of the traumatic century you lived through, mm. all those events. You were born right at the end of the First Great War. You lived through the Great Depression. You uh, lived through the Second World War. You lived through the nuclear era, the Cold War, genocide, the f collapse of the British Empire. I mean, does anything remain of the world you knew when you were young? Nothing. Nothing at all. The World War One. I, I'm a child of, of, of World War One, and I really know about the children of war because both my parents uh, were both badly damaged by the war. My father physically and both mentally and emotionally. So I know exactly what it's like to be brought up in an atmosphere of the continual harping on the war. He couldn't yeah. stop talking about it? Your father couldn't stop talking no. about it? No. He was obsessed with it. It was terrible, you know. These men were... Um, had been so traumatized. Though, of course, outwardly they were very civilized and good and kind and everything. But in actual fact, they were war victims. We keep having wars despite the fact that great novelists tell us the truth about wars. Well, we don't have much effect, do we? Do you know when I first recognized that horrible truth? I was standing in southern Rhodesia, I was very young, and watching the Knights bag of prisoners, the Africans who were being caught out without passes, handcuffed, walking down the street with the jailers white in front and back. And I looked at that and I thought, right, well, this was described in Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and all the others, so what have they achieved, is what I thought. Didn't stop me writing novels, so. <laughs> so I, 
I think we might have a limited effect on a small number of people. But I hope a good one. But you keep writing. Yes, I do. I have to.